Oh. Oh God, nice fish. Oh Jesus, this is a good fish. Oh yeah, he is. <laughs> Dude, did I just catch my PB on a buzz bait? Boom. We got overcast skies, we got a little breeze, temperatures are starting to drop, and I'm running to the lake. You know why? Buzz baits, baby. It's that time. It's time to get all buzzed up today on Captain's Corner. <laughs> That's right guys, buzz baits. You know, if you're anything like me, there is nothing better than topwater fishing. Nothing gets me more excited than topwater fishing. It's exhilarating, the blow ups, the strikes, the anticipation of watching that bait work the surface, waiting for what you know is about to happen. Bam! It's explosive. There's a huge variety of topwater baits out there. Frogs, toads, walking baits, spooks, poppers. There is so many types of topwater baits. But to me, there's only one topwater king. Nothing catches bigger fish and nothing is more exciting and more explosive than fishing buzz baits. My absolute all time favorite topwater bait for a good reason. Nothing on top will catch me bigger bass with more consistency than a buzz bait. It is such a versatile lure, but it's actually one of the simplest lures out there that no matter what your skill level is, you can effectively fish a buzz bait. It may look a little odd, this big hunk of metal going across the surface. I don't necessarily know why it works, I just know it does. And today, I'm gonna go over everything I know about buzz baits to help you become a better buzz bait angler. Oh, he came out of the water over top of it. <laughs> like he literally missed completely. He landed on it. Oh. <laughs> he landed on it with his belly. Real good fish again, oh yeah. Oh, he's a stud on that buzz bait again. Whoo, son, it's another giant. Another giant, dude. That's a six. I'm gonna say it's a six. Weigh it? Ooh, yeah, definitely weigh it. Look at that, buzz bait right in the corner. Got it on, I love that. Look at that, guys. Dude, they love those buzz baits here, man. Heck yeah, another nice one. Right at the boat, too. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't miss it this time. There it is. Another beauty, guys. I'm going to say it's close to six. Five. Five thirteen. Real close to six. Three ounces away. <laughs> Trick, yeah. Giant. She hit it right at the boat. Bent it up pretty good, but the black buzz bait, this time I had a swim bait trailer on it. Now, I'm not exactly sure who came up with a buzz bait, or what they were really going for with this. But whatever it is, it works, it absolutely works. It draws up some of the biggest bites you're ever gonna experience with topwater baits. And there's a whole variety of buzz baits out there. Big, small, single blades, double blades, holes in blades, ones with extra clackers, some with skirts, some without skirts. There's definitely a huge variety of buzz baits out there and it can get pretty confusing. So before I get into which buzz bait is best for you, let's do a little bit of when, where, and why you should be throwing buzz baits. When should you throw a buzz bait? Other videos might tell you the best time to throw a buzz bait is in the early morning. The best time to throw them is at night. Throw them when there's a little chop on the water. Throw them when the water's flat. Throw them in the shallows. Throw them in the deep. Around cover, under cover, open water. There's so many different places and times that people are gonna tell you is best to throw a buzz bait. And I think I know why. Because it's always a good time to throw a buzz bait. That's right. Typically a buzz bait works best in low light conditions. It's not the most attractive looking bait. But with a buzz bait, it's not really about the appearance of the bait itself. It's about the action, the commotion, and the noise that it makes. I throw buzz baits all day long. The simplest answer I can give is pretty much any time the fish are active and shallow. That's when I'm throwing buzz baits. You can move them at a good pace. You can cover a lot of water, but they will work better when bass are really keying in on bait fish and schools of bait fish. 
and yes, because of the noise and commotion factor of a buzz bait, they do work better in low light conditions. But don't be afraid to throw them in the middle of the day. Some of the biggest bass I've ever caught on a buzz bait have come in the middle of the day. Oh, he was behind it. Oh God, nice fish. Oh, oh Jesus, this is a good fish. There, he's very strong anyway. Oh. oh yeah, oh yeah he is. Holy shit, he is. Oh. <laughs> Dude, he's huge. Look at that, guys. Seriously, you can kind of see. Look at the size of that fish. This is a heavy fish. Oh my God, guys. Yeah. Holy yeah. crap, dude. Oh my God. That's a huge fish. Yeah. I'm shaking. Yeah. I am, sh oh my God, he's heavy. <laughs> I knew there was giants in here. Look at that. On that buzz bait. It don't get much better than that. Dude, did I just catch my PB on a buzz bait? Oh my God, guys. This thing is insane. Oh, that is a heavy fish. That is an absolute giant. Oh my God. Guys, seriously, look at the size of that thing. Ay, 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 ay. Oh my God. Are you kidding me? On a flipping buzzbait. Look, look what he did to this buzzbait, guys. Oh. Are you flipping kidding me? Uh, 8 11. 8 11? Let's let this bad beast go. What an amazing fish. Oh, oh there she goes. When you throw a buzz bait isn't as important as where you throw a buzz bait. Buzz baits are better off in shallow water and closer to the shore, and they're great in cover. If you've got grass, you got lily pads, you got lay down stumps and logs, they actually are fairly weedless, and they come through a lot of that really well, especially during the middle of the day when the sun is bright. Bass don't have eyelids, so they're gonna wanna hide somewhere where they got a little bit of shade and protection. Don't forget, they're ambush predators, so they're gonna be hiding in that cover. You need something that's gonna call them out and nothing calls louder than a buzz bait. When those bass are tucked up under the lily pads, tucked up under matted vegetation, or even just tucked up tight to structure like laydowns and logs, a buzz bait can really call them out and entice them to strike. Throw it through the grass, throw it around the laydowns and stumps, throw it un under docks, anything like that where those bass could be hiding, waiting to ambush prey, and just looking for something that's calling to them. Don't be afraid to throw it right into that cover either. A lot of reaction strikes come from when it's pulling free of the weeds or crashing off of structure. This big blade works very well to protect that little hook. They do work best in shallow situations when the bass are keying in on bait fish, when they're active, and when they're buried up in heavier cover. One of the best things about buzz baits is the amount of water you can cover with a buzz bait. You're moving them fairly quickly. Most top waters, you have to give a lot of action to it. A buzz bait creates all its own action by simply just retrieving it. So you can cover a lot of water a lot quicker than you can with most other top waters. It makes an excellent search bait to find out if bass are even there, if they're active, and if they're willing to hit the top. Not as big as the other, but a good three pounder. Yeah, nice. Smashed it. <laughs> Buzz beating. There it is. Kaboosh! I love, I love that strike. I do too. It's just nuts. And we're right in the middle of this nothingness too. There we go. Buzz beating. He's not bad. They're still hitting. You know, in this wind out here, there's really not a lot to throw. Oh, damn it, you son of a. Hey, 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 okay, bye. Cut my finger, his teeth were so sharp. Yeah, you need something in this kind of wind and stuff that's gonna make a little more noise. And we got so much vegetation and cover here that I don't think there's anything better to be throwing than buzzbait right now. And obviously it's working. What makes a buzzbait a buzzbait? 
Well, that's pretty simple. It's that big churning blade there. And there's a whole bunch of varieties of them. Some have big blades, some have small blades. Some have four tines, some have three tines. Most of them just have two tines to the blade. There are buzz baits that have two blades. There's a whole wide variety out there. And each one does have a bit of a different action to it. And it's all gonna depend on what conditions you're throwing it in, on which one's gonna work best for you. A typical standard buzz bait looks just like this. It's got one big blade with two tines on it. It moves a lot of water, it churns, and makes a lot of noise. They have an L-shaped wire leading down to the head, a skirt, and a hook, all in one piece. At the base of every blade, you'll notice a little piece down here called the rivet. That little rivet is what rubs up against that blade. It gives it the squeal or the squelch. That blade spinning through the water along the top churns and pops and gurgles and makes a lot of commotion, moves a lot of noise. But that, that metal rubbing up against metal right there gives it that little squeal, that little screech that really drives the bass nuts. There are other buzz baits that have a plastic blade. The plastic blades work very, very well, but they're a much more subtle presentation. They don't make that squeal or squeak that a metal blade will. Buzz baits that have holes in the blade create more bubbles as they're going through the water, giving a bigger bubble trail and a bigger target for the bass to hone in on. And blades that have three tines or four tines create more drag and resistance in the water, which actually means you can actually reel them in slower to keep them on the surface. Buzz baits that have double blades create much more drag in the water, so you can move them much slower and keep them on the surface. And there are also buzz baits that have an extra metal piece here called a clacker. As the blade spins, it clacks off that, creating more noise and more commotion. Baits like this with the clackers are generally best in conditions where you wanna make a little more noise. When it's windy, there's a lot of chop on the water, or there's a lot of action going on in the water with a bait fish smashing everywhere. Something like that with that extra clacker can make all the difference and get more attention than your traditional buzz bait. The other time I love these is at night. That extra clacker is just gonna make more noise, more commotion, give them a better idea of exactly where that bait is that they wanna crush. I'll reach for the smaller bladed buzz baits when it's ultra clear water, heavily pressured lakes, river systems, or any time that I know the bass are keying in on smaller bait fish. I'll go for the smaller, less intimidating blade. In heavily pressured situations or when they're just not looking for such a big bulky bait, that's when I'm gonna go to the buzz baits without the skirt. It's a much more realistic profile of just a bait fish. You just wanna make sure your soft plastic has a good action on its own. The blade is what calls them and gets their attention. This is what they're gonna key in on. So the more realistic and the more action that this has, the better chance you're gonna get the bite. Oh, oh. Hey, the buzz bait does work. <laughs> yeah, there we go. I saw that weight coming. There it is. Another buzz bait fish on the little buzz bait. No skirt on this one, just a trailer. And I almost always put a trailer on my buzz baits. Most of the time I run my buzz baits with skirts. The main point of the trailer to me is to give that bait a little bit more bulk, a little more for the bass to bite onto and feel and hold on rather than just a skirt around a bare hook. A grub, a fluke, a paddle tail swim bait, any kind of trailer that has a bit of action, but nothing that's gonna overpower that bait itself. Trailer hooks. A lot of guys out there will tell you, always, always, always put a trailer hook because bass do tend to short strike buzz baits quite often. I never put trailer hooks on buzz baits. It's just one more thing to foul up, one more thing to catch onto that cover. It just makes a mess. I have more, not, more problems with trailer hooks than I do when I don't. To fix the situation of short strikes, rather than put a nasty old trailer hook on here, I have two things. I can either bend the blade farther away, which makes the main body of the bait run deeper in the water, giving them more to attack. Number two, I'll put a smaller trailer on there. Rather than a big long paddle tail for a trailer, I'll switch it up to a single tail or a curly tail grub, a shorter version, like a three inch, where it barely sticks out past the skirt it's gonna make the bass wanna strike the whole thing rather than just the end, and hopefully makes them strike it closer to where the actual hook is. 
that alleviates the problem of short strikes for me. It makes it where I don't need to put a nasty trailer hook causing me a whole bunch of nightmares on that. Oh, there one. <laughs> I wasn't even looking. I was looking over there for that splash. I just felt them. Hey, buzz baiting bass. It's all top water Not today. And buzz baits. What a day. Just another little guy, though. Oh, he's acrobatic, though. Retrieving a buzz bait is one of the simplest things. It's pretty much a cast and reel situation. Typically, I'm going to throw a buzz bait as slow as I can and still keep it up on the surface. But it does pay to vary your retrieval speeds. Every so often, I'm gonna burn it a little bit faster. You cannot fish a buzz bait too fast. Bass hear a buzz bait from a long ways away and they're gonna be ready when it gets over top of them. Try to reel it as slow as you can and still keep it at the surface, but every once in a while, speed that thing up and burn it up and that could create an extra reaction strike that you may not have gotten in the first place. A very important part of the retrieve is on your initial cast. Buzz baits are heavy and they're weighted. They are going to sink. Fire the bait out as far as you can, but as soon as that bait hits, engage your reel and start reeling right away. That's where a good fast reel is really going to help you out with this. The gear I use on buzz baits is very important to me too. I use pretty much the same gear that I use on spinner baits or chatter baits. A good seven foot to seven foot three rod, that extra length allows me to fire that bait a little bit farther. Buzz baits create a, create a lot of drag in the air with that big blade, so you need that little extra length to be able to power them and cast them a little bit further. A medium to medium heavy action is important. You want a rod that's got a good strong backbone to it to be able to set those heavier wire hooks in a buzz bait. But you also want to have enough play and bend in that rod to really be able to load up when the fish does hit strike that bait. So a medium to medium heavy moderate action rod, seven foot to seven foot three is typically what I like to use. And I like to have a little faster reel on there. You want to keep that buzz bait on top. You want to have the speed to be able to catch up to it immediately to get it to that surface and keep it on the surface. So a fast reel like a seven to one, eight to one, or even nine to one reel is perfect. I use my Cast King Vassinator Elite 8.1 to one on all my buzz baits. And as for line, I'm using a 30, 40, or even 50 pound braid because a lot of times I'm throwing around that cover or anywhere from 15 to 20 pound fluorocarbon. And that's just it guys. There is no more exhilarating topwater bait than a buzz bait. No topwater bait will cover more water, make more noise, make more commotion, and draw out more fish than a buzz bait. Find which buzz bait is going to be right for what conditions you're fishing today. And I guarantee you're not only going to catch more topwater fish, you're going to catch bigger. My biggest topwater fish by far always come on a buzz bait. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed this and I hope you learned a little something. If you did, make sure you smash the heck out of that like button and leave a comment on anything else you'd like to see us film. We'll do our very best to make a video on each and every one of those. But most importantly, subscribe to the channel and stay subscribed because there's plenty more coming right here on Casking.